diversity is indeed a strength and not a threat. Ask Buckingham Palace why the Queen felt the need this year to devote her entire broadcast to a theme of tolerance, and you don't really get an answer. But it seems fair to think that the Queen is as concerned as anybody about the repercussions of a divisive war in Iraq, about the dangers of religious fanaticism, perhaps even about the current strains between town and countryside. And for the armed forces celebrating Christmas in Iraq and elsewhere, there was a special message from the Queen. After what she called a very demanding year, a year in which, of course, famous regiments are under threat from the government, the Queen chose to remind the armed forces how much they're appreciated. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News. Pope John Paul II has said more must be done to bring peace to areas of the world torn apart by violence. In his annual address in St. Peter's Square in Rome, he said he was following the situation in Iraq with great apprehension. He called for an end to violence in its many forms. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, has accused some rich countries of appearing deeply indifferent to world poverty. He told the congregation at Canterbury Cathedral that he was worried that the principles of justice and liberty were being sacrificed in favour of security. On the eve of the rerun of Ukraine's presidential election, a court has ruled that some of the legal changes made to prevent further voting fraud are unconstitutional. The election will still go ahead, but it means that restrictions on voting from home will have to be lifted. From the capital, Kiev, Steve Rosenberg reports. Viktor Yushchenko stayed away from the cameras today, but his wife and children were out decorating Christmas trees at party headquarters. Everyone here confident that Mr. Yushchenko will win Sunday's rerun election. But earlier, it was Viktor Yanukovych who had cause for celebration. Ukraine's constitutional court overturning one of the new election laws brought in by the opposition. They had wanted to restrict elderly and disabled voters from voting at home, fearing mobile ballot boxes could be stuffed with false papers. Mr. Yanukovych, how much harder... When I spoke to Viktor Yanukovych earlier this week, he claimed the law was an attempt to stop him becoming president. It was, he said, indecent to try to fight him by taking the vote away from his supporters, many of whom were housebound. In Kiev, though, tonight, people were taking a break from the political struggles at a Christmas street party on the eve of Sunday's vote. It's a sign of how closely contested and controversial this election has been, that at the final hour, the rules of the vote have been challenged and changed. But for now, at least, the legal battles are over. Ukrainians are preparing for what they hope will be, this time, a free and fair election. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Kiev. Mahmoud Abbas, the favourite to win the Palestinian presidential election in January, has launched his campaign by demanding an end to the occupation of the Palestinian territories. He said Israel must pull out of the West Bank, Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem. He also called on the Israelis to release all Palestinian political prisoners. Police are investigating the murder of a 93-year-old woman at her home in Glasgow. The body of Margaret Weir was found in her flat by a neighbour yesterday morning. Police say she'd been subjected to a particularly violent attack. Scientists are celebrating the successful launch of a space probe from its mothership, which is orbiting Saturn. The European design craft, Huygens, is heading for the planet's largest moon, Titan, which has an atmosphere similar to that of Earth four billion years ago. And it's been a white Christmas for millions across the UK today. Several centimetres of snow fell in Northern Ireland, Scotland, North Wales and parts of Northern and Western England. The Met Office has warned drivers to take extra care this evening, as many roads may be icy and treacherous. Well, that's it. There are news bulletins every hour on BBC News 24. I'll be back with more from the newsroom at 10.20 here on BBC One. Bye for now. Hello there. As we've seen, it's been a winter wonderland for some of us. There is some more snow to come. Not good news for anybody travelling. The worst of the weather this evening and overnight will be across the north and west of Scotland, Northern Ireland, North West England and Wales. A combination of snow, ice and some very windy weather with gusts of 60 miles an hour making for some really dangerous travelling conditions. Could well be some sleet and snow elsewhere overnight and with temperatures below freezing, ice could be a problem once again. I think the worst of the weather though should have cleared away by the uh, morning and most places for Boxing Day will have a dry and sunny day. There won't be as much snow falling, still a few wintry showers left across the southwest. not many showers across the north this time, though we could see a few wintry showers scraping these North Sea coasts 
heading into East Anglia. But not many showers left over for the afternoon. It's going to be another cold day, perhaps not quite as cold though as today. So there will be some more snow to come during tonight. Watch out for that. It should be largely dry tomorrow and then it should turn milder during next week. See you later. <laughs>